thank you so much. I've been so honored to be a part of this initiative, and it's been such a wonderful task force with so much great work. And I have the privilege today, so I want to thank you guys for inviting me about talking about what is really the impact of bile duct injuries, both to the patient and to society. These are my disclosures. None of them are relevant to this talk. So when we talk about cholecystectomy, we tend to think of this as kind of our freebie operation, right? We do about 800,000 of these a year. We expect them to go well. But if you look at the actual complication rate after a cholecystectomy, it can be up to 6 to 7 percent. And I can tell you from New York State data that we just looked at, that complication rate is actually on the rise instead of the decline and is about in the 9 to 10 percent range. And it also has a huge impact on our health resource utilization, both with perioperative emergency room utilization and readmissions. Again, things that you wouldn't rec um, think about from your routine cholecystectomy. You can see here, this was a graph from the National Inpatient Survey that really looked at the trend in complication in lap coli over time. And again, this data is only until 2006, but still relevant. And hopefully, if I got an opportunity to talk to you again, I can show you the new graph, which is just coming out, that this is still on the rise, and it is going up. So we're obviously moving in the wrong direction. But when we talk about injuries or complications after cholecystectomy, I think we can all agree in this room that bile duct injury is really our most dreaded complication. And when you want to know what the incidence of a bile duct injury is, it's really tough to stay because a lot of figuring out what the incidence is really depends on whether or not it's inclusive of bile leaks or minor biliary injuries or if you're really looking more at the death and destruction type of injuries that require major reconstructions. And when you include these small injuries, you see reported incidence rates, and we'll talk about this in a moment, of up to four in a thousand. There are some data that may be indicating that these rates are decreasing. If you look at the New York State data that we just recently pu uh, published, major bile duct injury was about 0.08 percent. And in Buenos Aires, you'd see about a rate of 0.2 percent. But again, this is really only capturing those major injuries, and they're based on registries, which can be hard to capture all of the patients. I think the best registry that we have that probably gives us the most comprehensive information is Galrick's. Galrix was founded in 2005, and this is a national Swedish registry for surgery and DRCP, and it really captures about 90 percent of all cholecystectomies that go on there, and it really aims to uh, provide current information regarding the indications, the treatment, and the methods of complications. And if you look at Galrix, about one and a half percent of patients had a bile duct injury, minor, minor or major, and that the incidence of a major bile duct injury which required reconstruction was 0.4 percent. And here you can see on this graph the distribution of the 747 injuries that they did recognize. And you can see there is a wide and varied distribution from minor to major as it goes across. So we look at these big numbers, but how does this hit home? And I think this was the most interesting study that I found when I was looking for bile duct injuries. And I think this is something would be awesome if we could actually repeat again. And in 2001, in Annals of Surgery, there was a survey that was administered to participating surgeons across the U.S. And about 45 percent of the uh, people actually completed and returned the survey, which for anybody who's done survey data knows that's a really high and extraordinary rate of return. And just note, there was 565 self-reported bile duct injuries. So 34 percent of surgeons that were surveyed self-reported a bile duct injury. And I think that that's a really big number to kind of keep in your head, which means if I pulled the room, which I won't, you know, about one in three people in here would say, yes, I've had experience with that or that's happened to me or I've seen that, you know, kind of happen and, or been involved in it as a resident or at some point. And I think that message really hits home is that it is more prevalent. We do have more exposure than is probably being captured in our administrative databases that we're using. So what's the societal impact of this? Well. It's associated with a billion dollars of health care costs. It's a key source of our medical malpractice claims against surgeons with almost 100 percent win rate. And malpractice claims represents 20 percent. So out of all of the malpractice that happens, 20 percent of monies that are paid to plaintiffs. And what's the impact to patients? Because at the end of the day, that's the most important. How is this impacting our patient population? Well, we know that once a bile duct injury occurs, that just kind of is the ball that's rolling in the wrong direction typically requires numerous reinterventions, hospitalizations. There's early and late complications. You have your perioperative set of complications. But then you have your long-term complications, the stricture rates, uh, cholangitis, different issues that can come down the line. 
and even mortality. So there's a couple studies that looked at sort of short-term mortality with rates of 0.06 to 4.2 percent. But I'll show you what we did in New York is we tracked people out after a major bile duct injury for 10 years after the injury. And what we saw between five and 10 years after was about a 21 percent mortality rate. Now you say, okay, 10 years, these people are older, 60s, 70s, what's expected? So we, ate, we um, compared them to the age-adjusted uh, information that's available on the CDC Wonder website and saw that it was 8.8 percent .8 above what the cohorts expected age-adjusted death rate would be. So it is significant. It does negatively impact our patients. And what about quality of life? There's a couple studies that have looked at quality of life in patients with bile duct injuries. One study that was published in Annals in, I believe, 2002 looked at quality of life after surgical repair of major bile duct injuries. This one came from Hopkins. And they saw a significant difference in a psychological dimension, but the social domains were comparable to controls. But the interesting thing is that when they correlated this to lawsuits, that they saw the presence of a lawsuit was associated with a poor quality of life assessment, which makes sense, right? The worse that you feel or the worse things that happen to you from your injury, the higher likelihood you have to, I guess, be angry and to sue about that. There was another study that looked at 62 bile duct injuries. Again, they saw statistical similarity in terms of your physical function, bodily pain, general health, vitality, mental health index. But regardless of this, we're seeing the same trend. The emotional health was worse. So despite physically and being okay and on an evening playing field with all other aspects, people were not recovering from this psychologically. And again, there was one that had showed long-term, and again, greater than four years, which, which showed the same thing. The psychological impact of having an injury like this is something that carries through, not just in the short term, but later on. The most interesting study I found on quality of life, and I just want to spend a minute here, is looking at long-term data in about 403 patients. They had a response rate of 68%. And they looked at changes in outcome in about five and a half years and 11 years after the injury. And interestingly, quality of life was significantly worse as compared to cholecystectomy and to non-operative controls. But if you look at that, the quality of life, even post-cholecystectomy, wasn't so great even compared to controls. So I thought that that was a very interesting finding. Why would having a cholecystectomy alone sort of put you at worse risk for quality of life? And they really saw that there was no improvement over 11 years. So if you weren't doing well, it's not like it was going to go away. It was going to keep happening and keep worsening down the line. 19% of these patients, so the same numbers we're looking at, filed a malpractice claim. And quality of life improved if the claim was resolved in their favor versus if it was rejected. So you feel bad, you sue, you win. OK, you're getting happy again. But if you don't or if your claim's rejected, then you're following that same trajectory. So as part of this, this is all great to look at this data. I did kind of the unthinkable. I Googled. I Googled bile duct injury patients. What are people posting on the websites? What are people writing in the forums? And it's a dangerous zone to go in. And I, I now know why I also tell my patients don't do that. And you know, there's a lot of accounts and there's a lot of very emotional statements. But there were just two accounts that I looked at that I thought were really interesting when people were talking about their injuries and really brought things home for me. And, and they're long, and I'm not going to read them. But what I've highlighted in the red box is really what I thought was important, which was the first person saying, spent almost three months in a hospital with nine procedures and reconstructive surgery. And it goes on and on to talk about how that impacted their quality of life, their time with their family, their time with their kids, their ability to work, their ability to provide means. And the second one said, talking about costs, costing 300000 in medical bills. No insurance, lost their home, trying to figure out how to pay for this. And I thought that those were very powerful statements that really kind of drove home on the individual level. What does this mean to your patient when it happens? You know, the cost of it, both emotionally, psychologically, financially, people losing their homes, time away from their family, time away from productivity. And this is, and this is what people are putting up. So the take home from this is that major common bile duct injury rates still occur. I think the newer numbers we're seeing are probably an underrepresentation. The truth is, you know, hot off the presses, we do have some data from the Premier database. It looks to be about 0.2, but I think 0.2 to 0.4 is probably a fair range for injury. And it still translates to 3,000 injuries a year, which doesn't sound like a lot, except for when you think about what those 3,000 injuries are translating into, which is over a billion dollars in cost, both medical, legal, and patient care, 
and the individual impact it has to the surgery, um, to the patient and to the surgeon. And it's really a key contributor to our healthcare costs, adverse and patient um, and surgeon outcomes. So I'll say thank you and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much.